All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our uh, press conference for the USF 2000 race number one here for the weekend. We have another race tomorrow set to go just before the IndyCar event. We have our top three drivers in the championship category and our winner from the national class. We'll start to grab the mic here, RC. Uh, RC Anderson, the winner in our national category. Uh, a great run for you, obviously. The car, you guys do some work on the car. You know, obviously you get a setup that your team gives you, but you have the bars inside the car, the sway bars that you can adjust. You had to do a lot of adjustments. You said the car was a little off at the very start. You made some adjustments to be able to work your way forward. Discuss that a little bit. What did you have to do to the car to get it quicker to be able to come from fourth in your class to take the lead? Um, when I first was starting to drop back, I had a really awful start and uh, found myself in fourth, uh, actually fifth, and picked up one spot until the yellow. And on a restart, going into turn two, I was able to pick off Patrick. And uh, then I had to chase down Henrik. And I had a good battle with him. We went back and forth about three, maybe four times. And then had to try and catch uh, Scott Reddick. Um, and got by him first try. But I had a hard time pulling away. And uh, with the sway bars, I had a really bad push with the arrow, mm -hmm. be behind somebody. And then there was so much rubber on the track from the ALMS cars that I was getting push after push. And uh, so I went full stiff on the rear bar and full soft on the front, and it seemed to fix it. So obviously you sampling some stuff to try to make it work. How's it feel for you to score the victory here? They're starting to come a little bit. The car is obviously good. You feel more and more confident every time you get a chance to drive? Yes, I, I do a lot. I'm progressing a lot. That's why we did the national class, to get more experience and to race up into the championship cars. The track itself, what do you think of Mid-Ohio? Does it suit your style? Obviously, you're in the middle of a battle battling with, with the guys on the track, but do you feel your style it works good here? Yes, I love road courses, and especially this one, because there's a lot of high speed and there's a couple low speed. And I like the different uh, elevation changes. Now, last question for you. Obviously, you made a lot of changes to the bars for the race. Do you feel you're going to be able to bring a lot of data back to your guys to give you a better baseline for tomorrow? Yeah, I think we can get it to where the car is balanced how it is right now and have the bars set in the middle so I have adjustments each way. Congratulations, man. Well done. Another win thank in you. national. Probably leading the points now. Well done. Yep. Thank you. Let's pass the mic down here. You know, this is, a, this is a tough one, obviously, we said when we were down on the podium. A, a tough one for Matthew, obviously, qualifying on the pole position and losing that with a tire issue. Obviously hard for you, but I'll tell you, we said in the, in the booth, probably great for your development, Matthew, because you actually had to pass some guys as opposed to running out front. You started 30th, you were aggressive early, up to 23rd on the end of the opening lap. But after that, you just started moving hard, and you made, I think, two passes on the outside of turn number five that had the announcers down in that, that area just losing their minds because they'd never seen back-to-back -back passes there. Talk about the race. Obviously, the car was good, but you, uh, you were pretty aggressive early. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic race. I mean, it was so much, it was a totally different environment to what I was used to racing here with the, the USF 2000. You're usually up the front, dice get out with Spencer, and the quick guys at the front, and it's a lot harder to pass, but yeah, and the closing rate was just so dramatically different. I came into corners and almost ran out the back of people on the first lap. So it was kind of a little bit different to what I'm used to, but yeah, the car was really, really good. I mean, the grip was so, like, it was weird because you'd warm your tires up off off the, like in between corners where there was no rubber and you'd almost like slide off the track, just weaving the tires. As soon as you got to a corner, it was just insane grip. So it made it a lot easier to pass because you kind of just dive into the corner and rely on the grip to, to carry your rip through the corner. So yeah, but it was definitely, you know, very exciting. There was a few close moments, but yeah, it's a, it's a shame there wasn't a few more laps. I think maybe I could have got close towards, a little bit close towards the front, but yeah, it was definitely a great race for me. Um, it's a little bit disappointing after qualifying, but I mean, you know, come back just enough where I can keep, you know, pushing hard for the rest of the season and hopefully, you know, catch up to Spencer, I guess, and change your points. One of the questions I would ask is that you kind of got rolling, you got yourself up the fourth spot. You were closing on him, but at one point, I think you almost drove off coming out of the keyhole. At least the car got real loose on you, or had a push on the exit. Did you, did you use the tires up really pushing so hard, but the tires a little bit more junk near the end, like with working them so hard early? Yeah, I think, you know, it wasn't too bad. I mean, everybody was struggling, I guess, but it, it was definitely a lot easier at the start. I just was running a little bit less wing than everybody else, so to try and get the passes down the straight. But uh, so when I got behind Trent and I started to get his arrow, he was a lot better through all the corners. And I kind of like, just that one moment, I tried to carry like more speed than he did and I just couldn't quite hold it. But 
you know, I just managed to get past him, just straight line speed basically with that with the lower wing, the lower down force and less drag going straight. So. Again, you said a big disappointment to have to start at the tail of the field, but you also said down there one of the most most fun you've ever had in a race car to be able to come from the back like that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's always the most fun coming from the back and go karting, and I've always really enjoyed it. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. It was lots of fun. Hey, 30th place to third. Congratulations, a great drive. Thank you. Matthew Brown, third place today. I'm with Scott Anderson. Scott, uh, you're not, obviously no stranger to, to Victory Lane. A lot of wins last year in the Skip Barber Championship. I uh, run for Mazda Speed this year, but man, your best race of the year, obviously. I know the Ballardi teams are working very hard to get you dialed into their car, you know, with the team and everything. You must be just absolutely thrilled. The second place finish today and not the one you had to back into. You actually drove well, got yourself to the front, made a pass for second, and uh, were turning really impressive laps. So give me your thoughts on the race. Um, yeah, we weren't really sure how the car was going to be during uh, for the race because we didn't have like the best qualifying. We we're decent, but uh, uh, we made a couple changes. We kind of took a little bit of a risk, and it turned out for the best. So uh, early on in the weekend, we had a good car. We kind of we knew we had something there. So, uh, so really, I'm just glad it, it worked out for the for the best during the race. We. Uh, I, 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 make, I knew I had to make some pretty quick passes early on, like to have a chance for a podium starting uh, starting fifth. Uh, you know, if I, if I let the top three get away, it just it's easy, it's easy to happen. So, um, so really, I made, I made a pass in the first lap and then got up to Trent and kind of stayed behind him for a little while and made a pass eventually and uh, stayed ahead of him for the restart. And it was. Uh, Awesome. Did you have to deal with the arrow push as well when you got up to Trent? Was it an arrow push? I mentioned that in the booth, the fact that you guys are tucked up underneath somebody and take so much air off the front wing that the car will push out some of the high speed corners. Was that an issue with you staying behind him? Or were you kind of just sizing up your competition before making the move? Uh, it wasn't. I, I didn't get a whole lot of arrow push from him, maybe a little bit in turn one. But other than that, uh, really, really not too bad. And my, my pass, I was, I was planning on passing him down into turn four. so. It uh, wasn't too much of an issue coming out of two there, so. So you, you guys said you made it, you know, a little bit of a risk trying stuff with the setup. Do you feel like that's something that you're going to continue with? Or are you going to go back to a baseline, or is this the new, the new baseline for your car? Uh, no, I think we found a pretty good baseline. Uh, we just, we, it, 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 I kind of think it was like a 50-50 shot with the, where we were, where we were going to go with some changes, and uh, we obviously found the right direction. So, uh, so I think from here we have, definitely have something to work with. Congratulations, Scott. Well done. Thank you. One more driver to talk to. Obviously, these guys all have a lot of issues here, Spencer. We're not going to talk about that with you. Your day, pretty much what you wanted to be in terms of the race itself. Started on the pole, you were able to gap early. Of course, those cold tire laps always important to be able to get that gap, and you were able to pull probably six or seven lengths over Trent on the opening lap. At that point, how was the car early? Let's start with that. Was it, you know, was it a little loose early? Were you dancing around a bit? Yeah, definitely a little bit. Um, when the tires were cold, is. It was a bit of a handful, but then after a few laps, it, the group really started coming in, and uh, I was able to put my head down, put some quick laps in, and you know, build that initial gap, and just try and you know, manage the gap, not push too hard, because you know we have to race on these tires again uh, tomorrow. So didn't want to push too hard, but just wanted to get enough to get get a bit of a lead. Now you guys got six laps in the books. You're out front. You got about a three-second lead. Everything's great, and all of a sudden the yellow comes out after one of the drivers went off in China Beach. Did you know, did they tell you how far Matthew got up at that point, or were you not even thinking about him? Was it just your own race? Yeah, I mean, when the yellow came, I had some time to think about some other things, so uh, the team came on the radio and said, I think he was up to ninth or 10th at that point, so, um, you know, I knew he'd be coming to the field. He's, you know, one of the fastest guys, the fastest guy in qualifying, and, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough, much tougher race tomorrow, I think, but, uh, you know, we're on pole again, so... Yeah, looking forward to it. I think we'll be able to, to stay out in front. Track-wise, I asked RC the same question. What was the rubber like? Obviously, a little different. We talked about the way the rubber was this morning and the way it was. What was it like after the American Le Mans? Even, you know, Matthew commented a bit. Was it even grippier than yesterday? I think it was grippier than yesterday, but nothing like uh, this morning in qualifying. Even though we were on new tires in qualifying, we were on new tires in race one, this morning was unbelievable. But, uh, you know, this afternoon was a little bit worse after all that rubber came down. It's, Especially on cold tires, and after the yellow, we seemed to pick up a lot of a lot of the excess rubber line on the track. So that was a bit difficult. But uh, you know, we have no idea what the track will be like tomorrow. Totally different rubber. I think we're going out after the Indy cars, so it's going to just be something else we're going to have to deal with. Well, congratulations on another win, five in a row. Well done. Obviously, a great deal for you. You extend your point lead. Uh, congratulations. Thanks a lot. There are folks. We have 50,000.